Okay, so now that we have built the intuition for what the reduced density matrix represents when we have a system composed of subsystems A and B, and we have given the expressions for rho sub A and rho sub B using this concept of the partial trace, let's go ahead and take a look at an example. And a good place to start is to go back to the scenario we had where Alice and Bob shared a pair of entangled qubits and we derive empirically the reduced density matrix for Bob. So now let's take a look at it again and, and see if we can derive that row to B but now using this expression. So there we had two qubits initialized at zero and we prepare an entangled state by applying a Hadamard gate on qubit one and then a CX gate between qubits one and qubit zero, right? And that's going to give us the Bell state, let's call it Psi, equal to 1 over root 2, 0 for Alice, 0 for Bob, plus 1 for Alice, and 1 for Bob. And we can derive the density matrix of this pure state by just taking the outer product of Psi with itself. And that expression is given by 1 half of the outer product of all combinations of the 0, 0, and 1, 1 states, right? So that's okay. And in this example, our subsystem A is the qubit that Alice has, and our subsystem B is the qubit that belongs to Bob. So we can define the orthonormal basis in Alice's subspace as phi sub u for u going from 0 to 1, because it's only one qubit, right? And we can select the computational basis of so states 0 and 1. And we can do the same for Bob. We say that his basis states are chi sub v, and that's for v going from 0 to 1. And again, it's also the, the computational basis 0 and 1. And, and we can write labels here to identify the two of them as a, a, and b, and b. So now let's take this expression for Bob's reduced density matrix and, and replace all the different basis states for the phi sub u's and just simplify the expression. So uh, to make things a little bit easier to follow, let's just um, change the color here of this to uh, let's say red and then here to green so we can keep track of things a little bit easier, okay? So what we're going to do now is we're going to just write explicitly the summation terms for this u from 0 to n, and then here is, is 1, so it's just two summation terms, and we're just going to replace each of, the, each of these phi sub u's with 0 and 1. Okay, so that's very simple, so this is going to be equal to, and then here in red we have, well, what is phi sub 0? That's uh, 0, right? And let's write A, so we know that this is for Alice. And then this is tensored with the identity matrix in subsystem B. But what is that identity matrix? So it's for one qubit, it's just the matrix, the diagonal matrix 1, 0, 0, 1, which in Dirac notation, we can write as the outer product of 0 plus 1. So let's write that down here explicitly. So we have here 0 for B plus one for B. Okay, and this is times our system density matrix, rho AB. And then on the right, we have the same, but with um, cats instead of brass, right? So we have a zero A tensored, and then let's just copy this expression for the identity based it here. And let's just change that to green, okay? So now, uh, the next summation term is exactly the same, but instead of with zero, we're going to have one, right? So we just have plus, we're going to have the exact same expression, but we're going to replace all the zeros uh, on subsystem A with ones. So this and this. The next step here is to realize that we can distribute this tensor product of this bra A to each of these two terms, and also because this is a bra, it's in a dual space, 
we can rearrange things a little bit to make it later clearer to understand. So, so I'm gonna just take this aside for one second and write down that this bra A tensored this ket 0B bra 0B uh, can be rewritten as 0B and then we can combine this 0A tensored 0B uh, as one term like this 0A 0B and and I mean an easy way to see that these two terms are the same is well we can take the we can take the vector format and just uh, write down 0A tensored with what is this? This is a matrix 1, 0, 0, 0, right? And what is this going to be equal to? Well, this is ket 0B, which is 1, 0. And then we can say, okay, what is this bra 0A, zero, 0B? Zero, That's the row vector 1, 0, 0, 0. If we perform this tensor product here, we get the matrix 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And if we perform this product, we get the exact same thing. So we see that the two of them are equal to each other. That's just to show that we can express this term uh, in this form. And we can do that for, for all the other terms. So now let's get rid of this here. And let's just write that this is equal to. And we can do the same thing on this side. Okay. And then since we have two submission terms, we have to do the same for the term below. So let's just copy and paste this and replace all the zero A's with one A's. Okay, now the next step is we're going to take this row AB and place in our definition that we have up here. So let's first, to simplify things, focus on just one part of the expression. Let's just focus on this part of the expression first. So let's copy that and paste it down here. Okay and replace row AB. And what we're going to do next is realize that we have these two terms here that are going to perform an inner product of this 0A, 0B with each of these terms in the expression. And as we know, since these are orthogonal states, if you have, for example, 0A, 0B, inner product with 0a, 0b, that's just going to be equal to 1. But if we have 0a, 0b, and on this side we have anything else other than 0, 0, for example, 0a, 1b, or 1a, 1b, this is just going to be equal to 0. So the only terms that are going to survive are the ones that match what we have here on the left. Okay. So let's get rid of all this and write down that this is going to be equal to 0B and then this inner product 0A, 0B is going to give us one with this one right here. And let's not forget the one half. So let me just write the one half here. Okay. And then we have 0A, 0B. And then the next one is this 0A, 1B. But as you can see, there's no term with a 0a and a 1b here so this is just gonna give us zero so this is the only term that is going to survive and then what we do next is perform the multiplication with this term here on the left that is going to be the same right now we have an inner product of this 0 0 with this 0 0 and this 0 1 so the only term that is going to survive is 1 half 0b and then the inner product between these two is just going to give us one so we get here 0b and then this term is just going to go to zero 
So this is the result just for the first summation term here, what we have in the boxes here in orange, but we have this other summation term here at the bottom. So we can perform the exact same procedure, but what we're gonna realize now is that the only term that is going to survive down here is the one that has this one one with the one that has this one one, right? Because there's no one zero and one zero in our row AB. So what that's gonna give us is one half of the other product of one B and one B. So that term is going to be equal to one half of one B other product with one B. Okay, so that means that for our whole expression here, so this row sub B, what we have is the sum of these two terms, right? So we have that row B, so Bob's reduced density matrix is one half of zero B, zero B, plus one half of one B, one B, which is the matrix one half, one zero zero one, which was what we had empirically derived in the previous video. So here we have how we can use this expression for the reduced density matrix using the concept of the partial trace to, to derive our row week.